Our next league today, we're playing some of this deck that Ryza, a uh, well-known Magic Online grinder, won a PTQ with. Uh, it's pretty crazy. It's got all these one-drops, and it's hoping to like just run its opponent over with Bushwhackers and more Bushwhackers. Uh, it's kind of an evolution of the 8-whack deck, but a bunch of the cards have been changed. In particular, it's playing Devastating Summons to kill people out of nowhere. So I'm pretty excited to give this a try. I haven't actually tested the new Khan yet. I really want to test the new Khan, Bjorn. Um, that is a card that really interests me. Uh, I can see it being helpful against like the like matchups like the one we just faced against the blue white deck. I can see that being it being decent there. Just having like a solid a solid four drop that can generate card advantage and like pressure counter spells and stuff. But I've not actually played with it yet. Devastating summons is hype. You you want coaching as well, Chantel? Like I would be very happy to coach you when I eventually get around to it. This card's pretty solid. It's got like perfect number of lands. Double Foundry Street. The the summons actually works kind of nicely with the denizens, which is cool. Holy shit, we're dead. Uh Huh. Right. <laughs> okay then. This this game's gonna be tough. Uh, this is a deck that uh, Chantal. This is a deck that Riser, a Magic Online grinder, ended up queuing for the Pro Tour with a couple weekends back. I know they were talking about it on the game podcast the week after too. Mm. <laughs> I'm willing to believe that they can they can empty their hand a bit here and just move on with my life. All right, all right. Let's let's bring in some sideboard cards. This deck is is quite something, Kendra. It is quite something. Do we want to cut some one drops? Or do we just accept that we can never beat a chalice in our life? I guess on the play, we just go under chalice, right? On the play, we just go under chalice. I'm just wondering whether I like want to board in Flame of Kel to like dig for my Smash to Smithereens. I could see that being the case. I'm doing pretty well, Kendra, yeah. Never not bringing in Chaney Boys. I mean, they don't get hit by Chalice, but they're also really slow against Bridge. I don't think I want them. Um, what am I cutting? Lava Monsters seem really slow. I guess Bolts aren't the best either. Bolts, like... I guess Lava Monsters are good against Bridge as well, right? So maybe Lava Monsters is fine, and we just trim on Bolts. Since they're, like, fairly low-impact burn spells. And then I can cut some, like, Fanatical Firebrands. This seems reasonable, I think. Never played this deck before. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, Nucleo, this is wild. And the fact someone qualified for the PT with it is kind of impressive to me. Uh... This is like a land away from being pretty great. I think this is not not keepable though. Cause it has no other one drops other than the Foundry Street. Okay, this is this is something. It has the smash, which is really important, I think. Like we kinda need to draw some more threats with this hand, but I think it's hard to send back a 6 that has Smash. We're going to wish we had Ferocidon rather than Chaney Boys against Pop to Sword. That's true. 
I'm, I'm very threatened by the Graph Digger's Cage. Alright. So this time we get to hold up Smash. Next turn we Bushwhacker. Into Flame of Cal to like dig for another Smash. Spell Sky. Well, we have to get rid of that anyway to kill anything, to kill a bridge. So we might as well just get rid of it. Devastating summons Bushwhacker. Okay. Doing it, doing it. We need them to not have... Even if they have a bridge, they might still be dead, right? So we, we make two free freeze. So we go devastating summons. Bushwhacker. Hit you for 12. And then they need to get a bridge below, like, two. They need to get a bridge and one card in hand to not die here. <laughs> oh, I needed this after getting crushed by Blue White Control all of last league. I needed this in my life. <laughs> oh my lord. Oh my lord. One with nothing incoming. <laughs> that would be wild. I think I'm just running it back. I think I'm pretty happy with how we have the setup. Alright, on the draw. But it should still be fine. Devastating summons. Apparently a powerful magic card with bushwhackers. Oh, I should update my uh, title, huh? We are no longer casting turn free cards. Yeah, that was fairly absurd, Nucleo. How do we feel about this? It's like a it's like a land short of perfect, right? Because we have a bunch of ones, and then we have the smash. I think again, I think being on the draw and having the smash makes me really want to keep this. It's only like a land short of being really good. I hope your new job's going well, by the way, Kendra. Alright, uh, I guess Firebrand is the better one to resolve than Loyalist, technically. Since Loyalist doesn't really have text in this matchup, beyond attacking. You're loving it? That makes me so happy to hear, Kendra. I was, like, really excited for you when you got that position. Alright, we have two Smash the Smithereens. Like, we draw the second land, and we're... I guess they have the Welding Jars, so, like, the Smashes don't actually do much other than dome them for free. Hmm. I am not surprised by that at all, Kendra. We have, like, essentially 11 points of burn in hand, plus 2 on the table. Like, 1, 2, 7. Yeah, we have 13 points in total, then. So the bridge is going to stop us attacking... We also have Flame of Keld that can double up some burn potentially at some point. I'm just going to Goblin Grenade them now. Just like use my mana. Maybe we were meant to keep the bolts in. Maybe like the bridge just comes down too fast when we're on the draw. We just have to keep the, the bolts in. Oh, they're going to get... What are they going to get? Maybe I meant to sack these in response. Maybe they could, like, get a Piffing Needle. 
This seems unlikely though. They have a spell sky. Jeez. So it's probably meant to sack these in response. This is fine though. We're only a land away from having like six points of burn, right? Oh, I should have, um, they only had the mox opal up. I could have fired the firebrands at them and like got him one damage. Ooh, 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 they're cracking the map. They're cracking the map. This is great. This is great. Oh my God. And put them to six. Because they tapped out of blue mana. Okay, the inventor's first going to start gaining them life. But we still have these two smashed to smithereens in hand. Goblin for a future goblin bomb, you're right, we should do that 100%. Hey, land, land is great, land is so good. Now we just start smashing things. They go down to four, back up to five in their upkeep. Blow up not welding jar. I agree, Fox. I agree with the line. Oh, they have a, a second welding jar. Okay. That's fine. We're kind of all in on these, like, on this, like, burn plan anyway. So this turn, we just smash another spell skite. Cast a random goblin. We get to use Flame of Kel just to get dig for more goblin grenades. They are definitely not out of the woods quite yet. Teleria West for Chalice. That's more threatening. That leaves us with just two smashes, basically. I think. I think that leaves us with just the two smashes to end the game. They decided not to cast it here, though. I guess it doesn't actually make any difference the way our hand looks. But let's cast Burning Tree, cast a random goblin, cast our Flame of Keld. And the, the Flame of Keld will hopefully dig us towards Either a smash or a grenade next turn, depending on what they shall us. I guess smash isn't quite enough anymore. I might be scooping in a moment. <laughs> um, I, I, guess, I guess smash could be enough because the flame is going to double up the damage, right? Flame doubles up the damage. So we have like one turn to draw smash here. If we don't, I will probably scoop. Heh. 
at me remembering what cards do. Alright. Yeah, there's no Hazorat in this fox. We were just chalice checking them, clearly. <laughs> that was the aim all along. Chalice checking is like underrated in paper. The amount of stuff you get away with is kind of absurd. Feeding the lava monster. The lava monster, monster is hungry, okay? Alright. That is not a smash the smithereens. We technically still have outs, but I also like value my time. Yeah, we were not getting there. Oh wow, that's pretty great, Kaylee. My my favorite one is uh, I had an opponent with a back to basics chalice on one in play, and they were on Merfolk. And I had five lands in play, but four of them were tapped, and I was on Delva. I just confidently went, like, end of your turn, pyroblast, you're back to basics. And they proceeded to pick up the back to basics and put it in the yard. And I untapped my five mana and proceeded to cast, like, two ponders. And both of them resolved. <laughs> it's like, this is... This is quite something. Oh, we could have cleared a spell sky. That's wild, Nucleo. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it was ridiculous, Scaly. <laughs> Just like I had, I went from having no hope of winning the game to like couldn't possibly lose. Thanks, Leviathan. Hope work goes well. All right. Assume this is a keep. Again, it like kind of needs a second land, but we're on the draw, and we've got plenty of stuff to do. Ooh, we are against Hollow One. Um, we can't really attack into a one-two anyway. I'm a bit tempted to cast the Lava Monster and hope to activate it next turn. Maybe that's reasonable. But I'd also just like to bolt this and keep my life to try. I think I'm just going to plan to bolt this. I think that's fine. <laughs> exactly, Mike. One landers are just part of the experience. That's absurd, Kaylee. That is the sort of thing that should not happen. <laughs> I didn't actually update the uh, stream decker, did I? It's probably fine. Um. Yes, I just attack for one here. I could get my Lava Monster down. I didn't actually see that Nucleo. I missed out on the Spell Pierce. I heard beautiful things about it. But I, I didn't see it live. If we draw a land next turn, we go Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Bushwhacker. And attack for like... What? A lot? I think the answer is a lot. We attack for a lot. I I'm not going to do the math. Alright. 
Alright, this is pretty great. And then we have a, a Goblin Bushwhacker for next turn. To like keep piling on damage. They probably have a Bolt in hand. Based on the fact they had nothing else to do with their turn. But they're still going to take a lot here. Which is good. If we draw a Mountain we even get to give the Lava Monster haste. Please no second Bolt. Okay. Still getting across for 7. Awesome. I'm going to open that up in another tab and probably watch it when um, the stream's done. Because I've not actually seen the clip. That is a blocker. Don't know that a blocker matters very much. So, Bushwhacker. Uh, they take... Lethal, I think is the answer. Rar. Turn 2 missile land drop, turn 4 kill. That was pretty great. That was pretty great. These dismembers seem pretty great. Uh, I don't think we want any of the rest of this, though. But the swimmers seem really nice. Clear anglers out the way. What do we dislike here? Uh, I do not find sideboarding of this deck particularly obvious. Um, Lava Monsters might be a bit slow on the draw. Like, on the draw, these are never going to get to eat Flame Blade Adept in a reasonable fashion. I could see just cutting those. Alright. Just admit. Not used to playing 18 land decks. And just like hoping to draw lands. <laughs> hmm. This is probably going to be my final league for the day. Hopefully. Hopefully it goes pretty well though. Is this just another one of those, like, we're on the draw, so we keep? If we draw a land, we have the Emissary into Bushwhacker Dream. And we have some stuff to do early. I think we have to keep this on the draw. Holy shit. Um. That's... A good one. Well then, uh, I guess, I guess I'm not really sure what to do here. Yeah, Tron plays like 19 lands, but you have loads of cantrips and stuff. Like half your spells cantrip you into more lands. Okay, lava monster down. Land blocks. At least they're like taxing their graveyard. Which is gonna like reduce the pressure they can apply here. I say before they slam a hollow one. Okay. Do I just have to goblin grenade this now? I think I do. Hmm. I have two grenades in hand. I could try and set up just murdering them. <laughs> could this be the dream turn to goblin grenade your one drop draw? <laughs> Maybe. 
I'm trying to figure out if we can just, like, not do that. Because not doing that sounds great. Yeah, I think we do go for the murder plan. I think I agree. Just, like... Do I cast the Bushwhackers? Or I could go Emissary into Bushwhacker, I guess. And then hopefully hit a land for... Yeah, it is super awkward. It is super awkward, Mike. You're correct. <laughs> this is an accurate observation. I think I'm still on the murder plan. Oh, I meant to go Foundry. I thought this just had haste like the other one. Alright. This is fine. We're going to draw land next turn anyway. And go Foundry into Bushwhacker and it's going to be great. I currently feel good about not grenading their Lava Monster. Based on based on the current contents of their board. Okay. They'd only be killing the Foundry Street this turn anyway, even if we did play it last turn, so it's actually worked out fine. I guess, I guess we'd then have a free power creature, right? So we're missing out on a free power attacker. They'd probably go, like, block with Lava Monster, shoot this, and then just take the two if we played out Foundry last turn. Okay. So they're going to 12. We're two damage away from the double grenade dream. And like, for as long as they're activating Lava Monsters on our board, they're not killing us. If they ever crack that fetch land, we're one damage away. I'll try my best, Kendra. Have fun at work. Hope you hope it goes well. With your card sorting. I'm just gonna attack them for one here. And they're gonna shoot it down. And then I will go emissary into a random crappy one drop. We do have to be aware, we only have I guess we'd like pretty live to be drawing into goblins, right? Yeah, I keep crushing. I'm not gonna kill the emissary, which is fine. I guess we could have saved the emissary to set up a bushwhacker turn, maybe. And just played out the denizen. Ooh. That, that's true, Mike. That's actually very real. Uh, brutality. Okay, they they want the final card that's in their hand, which is interesting. So I just cast this, force them to kill it with the lava monster. I could just sack one land, make two one ones, to try and get that final point, but then it makes it really awkward for the rest of the game. Because I can't go Goblin plus Grenade in the same turn anymore, then. Guess I just have to keep casting frats into their Lava Monsters to try and get that final point. Like, the other option is I could just throw five at their face here. Um... And then, like, try and toward draw towards a Lightning Bolt in addition to this grenade. Holy cow. Alright, we need two goblins. We need two goblins. That's all we need. Right, 
they have a clock now. This is fine. That is not a goblin. I'm going to sack one land to the summons, I think. Just make some 1-1s. One -ones. Like, stop the Lava Mancers attacking me. And then I could still go Goblin plus Grenade in the same turn from now on. Could also make two Free Freeze. Could also make two Free Freeze. I don't think that's winning my, me the game. I don't think making free freeze is going to win me the game. They get to like block with a lava monster, activate a lava monster to kill one. So it's only like one free free attacking in. I think I just want to make one ones. <laughs> maybe Mike, maybe. That's the dream, right? That is the dream. One one down. Yeah, that's very odd, Mike. I don't really get it. I'm just gonna trade with this lava monster here. I guess it gives them fuel, but whatever. Hmm. This is, this is, this is definitely an explosive hand, Fox. Agree. <laughs> Ooh. Seven damage, you say? I could just, um, immediately sack it here to try and draw a goblin next turn. It's possible they have a bolt in hand, but I think I'm gonna attack and hope they don't have a bolt in hand, because then my own bolts are suddenly lethal draws. And they have to start respecting the possibility of me drawing a goblin guide. They have a lightning bolt on top. Which is pretty good for them. Shit. Punished. I think that means we're now dead. Sure thing, Chantal. I will happily chat with you about that at some point later. Hmm. So if we just immediately sapped the, the Goblin Guide, we would have killed them. I still think I kind of liked turning Bolt into a live draw. Well, they deal 8. So they have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're on 8. Don't we just die, Mike? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're just dead. Like, I have to throw this at something. With, I have to throw this at the Phoenix with my Goblin Grenade, right? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, before the Phoenix attack. Grim is two, not three. But it, it gets to attack next turn, Mike. It gets to attack next turn. I guess I just have to kill the Lava Monster so that I don't die. This kind of sucks. I guess we're meant to attack first with the Bushwhacker, right? Um, although then they get to kill it and save their Lava Monster. Maybe that isn't the case. They have bolt in hand, yep. Yeah. yeah, Mike, they have bolt in hand. We revealed it to our goblin guide. Which is why we I knew we were lethal. Sorry, I, I said it at the time, but... It makes sense that you missed it. Yeah, we saw it off the goblin guide attack. Huh. 
Grim Lava Monsters is a scary magic card, I guess. We keep in our own Grim Lava Monsters with us on the play, because we can cast them to kill their Grim Lava Monsters. That's kind of a thing. Chaney boys to kill to kill lava monsters. Chaney Chain Waller would have been fire that game. Once we cast could cast it anyway. Maybe maybe Chaney boys okay. We are on the play. So like there's a decent chance we just run them over on the play. Without putting free drops in our deck. I have repented, Mr. Spear, that is correct. Cut all the non goblins. <laughs> I don't know what I want to cut for these lava monsters. I guess fire browns kill their lava monsters, so I don't really want to cut them. Maybe I'm just wrong about these, maybe. They would have been so good, that game is the problem. I could just trim on one of these. They're like kind of awkward sometimes. And then trim on one of these. I'll just like cut those. I don't know. First time playing this deck. <laughs> Do not really know what I'm doing with the sideboarding. That sounds fine, right? We've got Lava Monster on one. Force them to use a bolt on it. If they don't, it gets to like keep all their creatures in check with our fetch lands. Oh wow, they're starting on 16. This might mean they have a hollow one in hand. Okay, they're going to dig for a hollow one. This is scary. We can bolt plus lava monster hollow one, so we've got that going for us, at least. Please no second one. Okay, we get to keep playing magic, which is nice. Um... We do just have to kill this thing. We could uh, Firebrand plus Bolt, but I think I just want to get value out of my Lava Monster before it potentially dies. It's a good question, Chris. I assume Firebrand is better than Mog Fanatic in this deck, but I don't know if it wants that as well. There's definitely a point where you just have too much of that sort of effect. Rip. Hey, friend. Alright. Um, so... Go Firebrand. Kill your Lava Monster. Are we sacking Freelands? Or are we just sacking one land to make two one ones? And then like next turn we can make a pair of two twos and go super wide and trigger my denizen again. I think I like that. Just sack like one land, make two one ones to go really wide, then next time we make two twos. If we want. And like depending on what we draw, we can still draw like cast things that we draw. I don't think making a pair of free freeze is going to get us there, you know? I'll make two twos this turn and one ones next turn. Maybe that's better. I figured this way we can still cast stuff that we draw, which is kind of appealing. But maybe I'm just meant to like go for max damage next turn by making two twos. Could see that being better. Well, this worked out 
kind of, kind of worked out. Let's we dismember, make some 2-2s, two and just try and kill them. Just like clear their blocker out of the way. Obviously I'd like to save a dismember for a big thing. But I feel like if they had an angler... Feel like if they had an angler they would have cast it already, you know? You also just make one ones again. Make even more one ones, yeah, then we can still cast one drops. Which is like what our deck almost entirely is. It's probably not gonna make that much a difference, right? Because they're gonna be blocking the the two twos instead of the one ones anyway with whatever they cast. I actually like that, just like continue making like a million one ones with our devastating summons. And we deal deal three for five put them to 11. I think I think just making one ones is correct. I think I agree, Fox. Yeah, I agree, Kaylee. Being able to like keep casting spells feels good to me. With our deck all being ones. Our, like, haste creatures. I mean, we push a bunch of damage. We get to, like, trigger this. Yeah, this is great. Who needs lands, anyway? Does devastating summons count as a stone rain? Okay, one on one. We beat we beat Hollow One. They had, they seem to have some like awkward clunky draws that match though, which worked out in our favor. Devastating summons doing work, kind of, kind of doing work. Only if you have Herald of Leshrac, then it's a real stone rain. Oh my lord. I guess we know what we need to add to this deck then. Herald of Leshrac, get in. This is not exciting. I'm going to keep it on six. Are we interested in a grenade? I kind of just want more creatures. I guess grenades... I feel like grenade is like what you want to draw into after your early turns. Hmm. I think I just want more creatures here. I'm gonna bottom this. I could see that being incorrect. Like obviously, goblin grenades a powerful card, but I think I just want as many creatures as possible for when I do my turn three bushwhacker turn. The rematch. Alright. Um, we have a bolt. We could cast Lava Mancer here and hope it gets to check the Adept. Or we could just bolt this now to save like as much life as possible for later. Hmm. I think I like just casting the Lava Mancer. If we do get to like eat the Adept next turn, it's like a lot of upside. Yeah, I agree, Kaylee. I think casting the Lava Mancer feels good. Always cast Grim to Turak. Oh my god. Grim Lava Mancer is kind of a messed up magic card. For sure. So we're going to take 4 damage here. It's not the end of the world. Hopefully they don't have a hollow one for us. I 
Alright, I don't think we can actually beat this. That is a lot of hollow ones. Um... So... We have eight points, we have five points to their face to put them to eight. And then I guess we just like hope to have a good turn next turn and like not let them know what we have. Maybe they attack with everything. Sevening them with Bushwhacker. We just like can't get past the hollow ones. Is the problem? Oh, it's last turn's play. Yeah. I'm just gonna pass the turn here. I think. I'm gonna go lava monster plus bolt on their end step. I'm not gonna do anything to these creatures unless they're literally killing us. So I think I have to kill my opponent next turn. Otherwise, I'm just going to die anyway. Because they go to 8. So if they, like, cycle a Street Wraith or crack a Fetch or something, we maybe get to kill them. like incredibly unlikely to work but this is 10 11 sure if you have a bolt I'm dead anyway <laughs> the only reasonable response is to add four manamorphos I do like manamorphos then I can add some storm entities Fanatical Firebrand, does that do it? So we can seven them here. We needed them to like crack the fetch for some reason. Um I think there's no way to kill them, right? Like, Emissary into Bushwhacker is 7, or Firebrand into Bushwhacker is only 6. Okay. These games are a lot tougher when they actually have the early hollow ones. Wow, Mike, you broke the format. Everyone's going to be playing that now. So before we were doing this I think let's try this we get to be on the play as well um so that's four lands which is a lot of lands in our 18 land deck the card set has a pretty good I don't feel like I can reasonably keep this. Okay. Cool. <laughs> On a positive note, this hand is very similar to our seven. So, like, we've got that going for us. I feel like keeping a four land hand in my 18 land deck feels a bit awkward. We are quite dead, for sure. I, I, 
George, are you impressed that someone won a PTQ of the stack? To be fair, the person who won a PTQ of the stack is legitimately a much better player than me. So. Yeah, Riser is a master. 100%. for four here like starting to get something going I am aware of that, George. I find it deeply puzzling. <laughs> this card is garbage. <laughs> oh. You won't think that anymore when you have like a lingering souls on your side of the battlefield and they attack with it, but... Alright, alright, alright. Counters lingering souls. Nucleo got there. If this card is good, Kiffian is the best card ever. Hey, Kiffian is now seeing modern play in, um, in Daniela's red-white Mox Amber deck, red-white legends. Kiffian is indeed a modern, playable magic card. Daniela is great, for sure. Is this like the same thing? Is this so hard to keep four landers? Like, how does this hand kill people? If we draw a second land, this hand is, like, kind of better. <laughs> is this our third hollow one deck in a row? What? How is everyone playing Hollow One today? Everyone is on the stack. This is like our fifth match in, in 14 matches against Hollow One. If we're dunking on Leon and Arbiter and playing all in aggro decks, this is basically a Daniela stream. I mean, that would require me to like go get some rum or something, right? Oh my god, so many flame bird blade adapts. Um, yes, we're just gonna be killing one of them with our Grim Lava Monster. Okay, that's a faithless looting. No, this deck feels a bit frustrating from the perspective of, like, the ceiling on your hands is pretty reasonable, but the floor on your hands is, like, 
very easy to hit and very unexciting. And like, it feels like it takes a lot to get above that floor. Like the hands where it's just like assorted random one drops feel like they don't do very much. Yeah, this is pretty over. All right, all right. Let's try the same sideboarding we've been doing, where we just bring in the dismembers. Like, we could honestly bring in some Smash the Smithereens for Hollow One. Maybe. Maybe you have to. Maybe the draws where they don't have Hollow One, they're like a lot easier to deal with. So you just have to bring in some of these just in case. And like, the thing I wonder is Lava Monster is like good against their Flame Blade Adept starts, but I don't know if you win the games where you're just like leaning on Lava Monster here. Just from the perspective of like, the more time you give them, the more like 4-4s four and 5-5s five they get to draw towards, which you just can't beat. And Lava Monster is a card that gives them lots of time. I actually, I'm just going to try cutting these. I feel like this is not part of our nut draws, and it lines up well against like the flame blade adept half of their deck, but I'm not sure how that's how you win games in the matchup. Especially they have lots of bolts and stuff to kill these anyway, like even the games where you could hypothetically lean on these, they just get killed. <laughs> I think I'm just going to cut the Grim Lava Monsters on that basis. Maybe this leaves us with like too many like removal spells and not enough, not enough creatures, but we'll see. I kind of like trying this out. Um, if we draw a second land, this hand is like great. But if we don't, it's like, you can literally never win a game. And you're only like, 30% to draw a land in this deck. So this is one of those hands where I feel you can keep it on the draw. Because then you're like, maybe 55% or 60% to have like a really strong hand. But on the play... On the play, I don't know that you can keep this. Okay, this hand does some stuff. That's a goblin guide. <laughs> that is indeed the plan, Fox. That is indeed the plan. Do we want this? It's like fine. It lets us like double spell next turn. Certainly not exciting. But it turns like all the like we're hoping to draw more red creatures following this, right? In order to win this game anyway. And that is the worst card in your deck, bottom it. Reasonable, reasonable. Okay. Get to attack for free. They're probably going to bolt the Goblin Guide. But then we have like a follow up random crappy creature. Ooh, look at that stomping ground value over there. Okay. 
Okay. Hmm. 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 These cost a hollow one. Oh wow, that burning a crew is actually good for us. It upgraded the the land into a dismember, which is nice. Now if they cast an angler, we can kill it. Okay, now we upgraded the dismember into a bolt. Even better. Get to attack them for five. We have this bolt as three points of damage in hand. Obviously they didn't have um, a hollow one to cast after the inquiries. So Smithereens might not have a target for a little while, but that's fine. This does not seem like an autumn deck. Hey, I play all sorts of stuff. Are you claiming I never I, I just exclusively play control and griefer decks? Normally. No. Alright, this is fine. If we hit a land, we get to go bolt into Bushwhacker next turn. Giving them so many lands. <laughs> no one can possibly know what Battalion does, but damn it, we did it. We sure did. We sure did. Alright, this time they're going to cast a hollow one. Then we're going to untap, draw a land. It's going to be great. I only just noticed that this is in their deck. Which is a bit surprising. Brings in the ensnaring bridges in the sideboard. Oh my god. Eight wax sideboarding ensnaring bridges. The dream. This is going to be a hollow one, right? One time. No. Come on, just one time hollow one. That's all I ask for, opponent. <gasps> okay. So, land kills them, hasty creature kills them, I guess that does it too. Game free. They have three destructive revelries in their deck. I don't understand what is going on. Did they assume we were like on burn? And they brought in destructive revelry for Eidolon maybe? I think that's the only way I can like rationalize it in my head. Maybe maybe they think we're on burn and they think we have like sideboard and snaring bridges. And now they know we're not on burn, so they're gonna sideboard out the um sideboard out the revelries. That would make sense. It's like against burn you can hit idle on or bridge. I do not have a red prison deck, I'm afraid, then. I might, I'm going to do a legacy day at some point in the next week. I might play some mono red prism when I do that. So to triple next level them, 
We should board in our D-spheres. Fox sees the line. They will never see it coming. They'll be there with, like, their faithless looting hollow one hand. Won't be able to cast their hollow one because of the damping sphere attacks. This hand's great. If you um, if you just pretend these Legion loyalists are like Boros charms, this hand's amazing. <laughs> Ooh, flame blade. We're gonna see Stru cycle street wraith trade with goblin guide. They reveal a lightning bolt from their deck. Which is pretty good against Goblin Guide. Burning Tree Emissary, huh. So what we can do is attack with both Loyalists this turn. And then next time we go Emissary into Kick Bushwhacker. to give the emissary and the bushwhacker haste. They revealed us they got to draw a stomping ground off our goblin guide. This bushwhacker always feels so much worse than the other one. The fact that you can't, like, cast it off of the emissary properly is, like, slightly frustrating. I need them to not have a hollow one or delve threat here, otherwise they can block the bushwhacker. Which I think is what's going to happen. I think this is a Gurmag Angler. They got, they got to keep us off of Battalion. Obviously, who can beat Battalion? Huh. Does that do anything? It means I can bolt the Tassigur after they block a creature, potentially. Um... Oh, it also means I could go Bushwhacker, Emissary, Bushwhacker. And then they'd get to block the Emissary. But they'd take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and go to 7. And then we're drawing live to, like, Goblin Grenade. I'm into it. I think, I think I'm into that. I could also just, like, bolt down the Tasker. I don't hate just like bolting down the Tassiga. They would take two, three, four, and go to nine. Then we'd have the Bushwhacker for next turn. Yeah, I think I prefer this by like a tiny bit. I guess it's likely they'd have to leave back creatures to block is the thing. No, just going face has to be correct, right? This like can't be incorrect. Put them to seven, have a bolt in hand. They have to like leave back the Tasker to block so they can't try and race us. They're just a bit tough because they have this like phoenix in the yards. So they aren't far off killing us, but 
think this gives us like the highest chance of winning. Right, they went to six. They blocked the, the loyalist instead of the emissary. Which I think is good for us. Really hates one ones, doesn't everyone? Oh, is this an, this is a brutality, Jesus Christ. That's pretty huge. If opponent attacks with both, they're still dead to Goblin Grenade. But I think that's like the only real out we have here. Attacking with just Tasiga seems correct. It like presents like lethal next turn fairly easily, whilst also leaving back two blockers so they don't die to Grenade. Uh, yeah, this is pretty over. That's kind of sad. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play out the fifth match before heading off. I think I have time to play one more match before heading off. Obviously, this deck is not going entirely to plan. I'm impressed that Riser managed to win a PTQ of this. It feels like kind of clunky, honestly. I could also just see Hollow One being a tough matchup for it though. They have um, a bunch of 4-4s four and 5-5s five fives that block really well against like your small creatures. <laughs> this deck does one thing and not very well. That sounds about right. <laughs> Oh my god, imagine if um, we got paired against like the two blue-white control decks we faced in the previous league with this. I assume this must beat up on control pretty well. Okay, this hand is great. This hand is very, very good. They've exiled Ancestral Vision. That has to be good for us too. So let's go Firebrand this turn. And start swinging. Next turn. <laughs> turn 1, 1, one, one haste. This hand is very... I mean by this deck standards, right? <laughs> Oh, are they on, like, Mono Blue Living End, maybe? Bushwhacker can't be blocked by cowards. Oh my god. This time I'm just going to go Emissary into Lava Monster. Set up for the Bushwhacker next turn. No. Alright, that's actually fine. Now we just go Emissary into Bushwhacker instead. It must be Mono Blue Living End though. Okay. If they counter this, we can still cast the Lava Mancer. I just think it'll just be like a mono blue control deck. I have seen those running around occasionally. Ooh, 
vapor snag. Okay. It's not the most terrifying card. I think this is probably quite bad in this matchup. Um, just keep casting my emissary. No. That's so rude. Oh, you think they might be taking turns? I think that's like a mono blue control deck, honestly. I guess I just firebrand this out the way, attack with my lava monster. Taking turns is the most plausible. I've not really seen Vapor Snag in taking turns before. But it is plausible that that's what they could be. Like, I guess um, Vapor Snag's a perfectly reasonable card to play when you have Howling Mines in your deck. Another Ancestral Vision. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just gonna keep casting this magic card. In before Wizards Retort. That would be wild. Wizards Retort would be the dream. Jeez. Okay. Cast my lava monsters. <laughs> the O4 bracket is a mystical place. Full of danger and beauty. Oh my god. Spire Golem is not beatable. How do we beat a Spire Golem? Oh, is this the list? Nucleo? This isn't the list. It doesn't have Spire Golems. Needs more Spire Golems. Yeah, summon seems vulnerable to a lot in this matchup. <laughs> I guess I have to just shoot this down. I'm never gonna like resolve all these goblin grenades anyway. <sighs> I'm just gonna pass the turn, shoot down the spire golem in their turn. They join with their pauper deck. Pauper staple spire golem. I feel like this is a fitting way for this 8 whack deck to lose. Mono blue deck killing the mono red deck. I'm just going to shoot them for four now that they've attacked with the Spire Golem, I guess. Hey, Amy. Let's just sack all our lands and hope for the best. Not going to lie. I'm considering that. Oh my god, Nimble. This card. All League. This card has been trolling us. Alright, cast my Legion Wireless. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I might just have to do that K. And, like, hope they don't have a counter. I think I want to keep, like, some number of lands. I can make, like, two twos or three threes. Yeah, um, so if I summons, sack two lands, I get two twos. Oh my gosh, Amy, thank you so much for that resub. Everyone spread some hearts in chat. Thank you so much. Free freeze or lethal with Bushwhacker, yeah. So I think I'm just going to go for free freeze. And then even if it goes wrong, I have like Lava Monster to kill maybe kill them with afterwards. Thank you, Kay. I really, really like it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Amy. Oh my god, are we doing it? Are we, in fact, doing it? Nimble obstructionist time. No. Oh my god, Phil. The bear pit thing is just like never gonna die. I, I've accepted it. How is this all resolving? How are we so lucky? How are we still alive? Indeed, Fox. Okay. So that happened. Um. So I feel like these should be really bad against the Remand deck. Even though they won us that game. You're waiting for Ether Eyes. Oh my lord. I could bring in Smash against Golem. That seems already narrow though. Oh my god, Kaylee. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kaylee. Everyone, spread some more hearts in chat for our new subscriber. That's amazing. Thank you. So I think I need like one more card. Chain Wheeler also just like randomly kills Snapcasters, I guess. It's probably better than the summons is going to be most of the time. I'm going to do this. <laughs> it does sound bad, I agree, Kay. I'm glad someone's on the same page as me. I have not forgiven Dave, I am quite upset at him. Well, Goblin Guide has to be pretty good here. Is it more la more damage to lead with Denizen? So if we lead with Denizen, they take four. If we lead with Goblin Guide, they take four. I kind of just want to lead with Denizen. Since it's like the same amount of damage. Except like if we draw another one drop, it's like one more. Yeah, it also gives them less virtual draw. That's right, Kay. They get, like, less opportunities to rip plans. Yeah, I think leading with Denizen is actually better, weirdly. Alright, so we go... Goblin Guide. And then I've got enough to do with my mana. I think I'm just going to hard cast a Bushwhacker, get my 1-1 in play, 
and trigger my denizen. If I didn't have the second bushwhacker, I don't think I'd cast that one, but having the second one makes it feel a bit better. Tempest Gin. Look look at us playing standard. Kind of kind of playing standard. I was not aware of that, Amy. I know it as the the market underneath like one of the roundabouts in Bristol. Um, I kind of want to go Denizen into Bushwhacker, I think. Just like double spell into the Remand. If they want to Remand the Bushwhacker, I'm like okay with that. Because I'm still getting in for free damage and I've still resolved this. That's less spicy than Tempest Gin. <laughs> that is somewhat less spicy than Tempest Gin. Alright. The old 2-3. This, uh... This was not the most inspiring deck in the world. I'm I don't think I'm going to play this again. I am deeply impressed that Ryza managed to win a PTQ with this. <laughs> huh, okay. There's actually there is um there is like a little market area that goes by that name in Bristol too, Amy. I used to live in Bristol a little while ago. <laughs> <laughs> 